Ottawa, authorities in Ottawa received clear warnings several days before the Freedom Convoy arrived. That the protesters were planning to stay for weeks, and in much bigger numbers than police expected. Ottawa's city manager Steve Kenneth Lacos revealed Monday. In other revelations at the Public Order Emergency Commission, the city of Ottawa began secret negotiations with the convoy organizers to move 400 trucks because there appeared to be no plan and no end in sight to the protest weeks after it began. Testifying Monday afternoon, Mayor Jim Watson's chief of staff Serge Arpin said that in his 12-year political career, he had never been involved in negotiations with protesters occupying city streets. It was extraordinary. But that changed in roughly two weeks into the blockades. When Ottawa Police Service OPS, liaison staff met Kenneth Lacos in his city hall office on February 8 and implored him to meet with organizers to continue negotiations to clear the streets. OPS staff said their communications with convoy organizers had broken down, creating a significant issue in negotiations to end the protest, he said. Despite his initial reticence, he eventually spoke to Mayor Jim Watson and Arpin and said he would agree to a meeting. A few hours later, OPS organized a secret meeting between him and three convoy organizers Tom Marazzo and lawyers Keith Wilson and Eva Chipuk at City Hall. Kenneth Lacos said they discussed moving trucks out of some neighborhood streets and into streets surrounding the parliamentary precinct in exchange for a possible meeting with Mayor Watson. But a deal was finalized a few days later, on February 13. In the meantime, Ontario Premier Doug Ford's former chief of staff, Dean French, also stepped in as a goodwill negotiator between both parties. Arpin told Poic that at that point, the mayor was open to any solution to reduce pressure on Ottawa residents who were under siege from the convoy. It appeared that there was no downside for us to undertake this dialogue because there was no end in sight. There appeared to be no cogent, multi-jurisdictional plan to bring this thing to an end, Arpin said. The Commission also heard testimony about how OPS profoundly underestimated both the number of truckers converging on Ottawa as part of the convoy against vaccine mandates and COVID public health measures as well as how long they intended to stay. Kenneth Lacos told the Commission the city expected the convoy protesters to stay only through the first weekend and then leave. That information was based on assessments from the Ottawa Police Service OPS which the city followed as it planned for the first weekend of protests on January 29. That first Wednesday was when they thought the last of them might leave. And the majority of them leaving after the weekend, Kenneth Lacos testified. This was information provided to the city on the 26th of January. But the city received information and assessments from other organizations, that contradicted the OPS assessments and indicated protesters planned on staying for up to three months. In the days leading up to the protests that began in Ottawa on January 29, emails laying out plans for a longer-term blockade from convoy organizers to various hotels in the city were being forwarded to Top City Brass and the Mayor's Office from local Hotel Association President Steve Ball. In one email to a hotel, a convoy organizer inquired about booking rooms for 10,000 to 15,000 people for at least 30 days, and up to 90 days. Ball also warned the city that the convoy participants has made clear they would be blocking access to the city. They will leave their trucks in place, chain them together, and attempt to block all accesses to the city. A staffer in Mayor Watson's office explained, based on explanations provided to Bull by a convoy member in the days before they arrived in Ottawa. News reports and social media also indicated the truckers intended to stay well beyond the first weekend of protests, despite OPS assessments. Kenneth Lacos said they shared that information with police, but there are often different assessments and information about how a protest will unfold, 
something the capital has a lot of experience with. The last 20 years that I've been involved they handle those demonstrations very well. And the people have confidence in their assessment of the situation, he said. Most every protest we've had, whether it was a G8, G20, farmers protests, the numbers vary widely leading into the actual protests. That is a normal situation in my experience. Even city councillors disagreed with OPS assessments of the size of the demonstrator group. In the days leading up to the first weekend of Freedom Convoy protests in Ottawa, many are now saying shut down the city until the restrictions are lifted. This is going to last more than a weekend, Councillor Riley Brockington said in an email to Top City Brass on January 26. About messages by convoy participants that were showed at the commission. The OPS today estimated 1,000 to 2,000 to protest. No way. Expect many more, he added. Kenneth Lacos also addressed the decision to allow heavy trucks into the core. He said blocking the streets in the core would have moved the convoy, but not have prevented it. The risk was they would leave their vehicles on the 417, or in neighborhoods all over the city and just walk away, he testified. He said that assessment continued into the second weekend of the protests. When more trucks flooded into the city, because police were still concerned they didn't have the authority to keep truckers out without infringing their charter rights. For the second weekend, the posture from OPS was still that there was no legal authority to stop them from entering, he said. Article content. Ultimately, the short-lived deal struck between Watson and convoy organizers on February 13 allowed for 400 trucks to leave residential areas and move to Wellington Street, in front of Parliament and the surge on A. Macdonald Parkway within 24 to 72 hours. Many, but not all, trucks did that. The deal infuriated the head of the Parliamentary Protective Services PPS, in charge of security on Parliament Hill, who wrote a message to Kenneth Lacos denouncing the decision to further concentrate trucks around the Parliamentary Precinct. Quite honestly Steve I am at a loss as to how this sort of agreement could have been worked out with a clear disregard to security. Especially considering that we just finished a bomb blast assessment. Which included the threat of explosive being transferred via large vehicles, PPS Superintendent Larry Brooks and wrote to Kenneth Lacos. In cross-examination by Brendan Miller, the lawyer representing convoy organizers, Kenneth Lacos admitted that the deal fell through after only some of the vehicles had moved. But he disagreed with Miller's claim that it fell through because PPS and OPS stopped collaborating midway through. I was made aware that Ottawa Police and the other police services were getting ready to move into tactical operations. So at that point, I think that was probably the greater reason why they stopped moving trucks up on Wellington Street, he said. After the trucks were set up and entrenched in the capital's streets, Kenneth Lacos told former police chief Peter Slowley's lawyer during cross-examination that he did not believe OPS had the necessary resources to remove them by itself. He also said the city did not have enough heavy tow trucks to remove parked convoy vehicles on its own. Kenneth Lacos explained the city's transit authority OC Transpo owned two heavy tow trucks but staff didn't feel safe using them to remove heavy trucks from the core. He said other companies and municipalities didn't want to take part either. We ended up calling tow truck companies in other cities, the province, the federal government, looking to see if we could access heavy duty tow trucks for use in the event, he said. And you're getting declined by everybody we call in that they didn't want to get involved. Kenneth Lacos said there were three main reasons why tow truck companies refused to go into the encampments and tow away convoy trucks. He said some feared for their staff's safety because it could be quite conflictual when you take someone's truck. Others feared damage to their own vehicles, as well as reputational damage that would lead them to lose business. Finally, 
a third towing group were sympathizers of the protest and didn't want to remove the Freedom Convoy trucks. He said even if tow trucks were available, it would have been difficult to use them amid the chaos downtown. You need to secure the area where the actual physical truck is protected before you can bring the tow truck in and be able to move it out. Kenneth Lacos confirmed Ottawa by law enforcement agents neither ticketed nor attempted to tow vehicles. In the Freedom Convoy Red Zone, downtown streets fully blockaded by trucks, because they refused to go in without police support. He said there was concern for bylaw agents' safety and a fear of creating a volatile situation. In a crowded area where police